The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, live in studio, waiting for your calls. Give me a call. I'd love to talk about anything that's going on with your health, and maybe we can put you in a different direction, you know, without drugs and surgery. What a beautiful thing that would be. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Let's talk. Let's see if we can walk you through a little different direction instead of having to reach for, you know, like this time of the year, the flu vaccine and everything else that they want you to put in your body. Well, I'm going to have a couple of insights for you on that and give you the actual effective rate of any kind of vaccine. You may be very surprised, so stay tuned. It's uh, it's one of those things that I think many of us uh, you know, are being duped. And when you are, you need to stand up and be noticed. You know? So let's get into the program. And we're going to talk a whole lot about why you stay sick. You know, in our office, we see people that, you know, particularly this time of the year, that have the same stuff over and over and over again. And we wonder why, they wonder why, if you will, that they can't get over it. You know, they've been to their well-meaning local doc, and he has given them whatever it is that he gives them and said, you know, uh, let's see what happens. You should be better. But nobody's addressing the causative patterns of why people get sick and stay sick and never seem to get better. You know, you're sick and tired of sick and tired. Well, I'm going to give you some insights of how you can change that around. The unfortunate part of it is it has a lot to do with our putting up with in our lifestyles and the things that we do to ourselves. Yep, you're the culprit. You've got your fingers in the pot and you keep stirring it around. And I think you're going to see why that takes uh, takes effect. How many of you really feel as good as you would like to feel? How many of you put up with pain and body ache and soreness and lack of function and the inability to reach or to bend? How many of you have constant headache or stuffy nose and just body that just doesn't feel right and you've been dealing with it for a long time because every time you go ask somebody about it they can't tell you what's going on or what you should do about it and in fact if you do go to find somebody that actually knows something about those things maybe you kind of recoil and you don't want to do what is necessary to make a difference what am i talking about well you know years ago not so many years ago but about six years ago i wrote a book called Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. And I wrote it because I wanted you to get the idea, the understanding that your health is in your hands, that you have the ability to maintain a solid basis that you can springboard from, get through life without any kind of major illness or infirmity or breakdown, or you can you know, slide down that slippery slope to a point where at some time of your life, all these other things start accumulating and cause problems from, you know, what do you, well, what do you expect for your age? You have arthritis. What do you expect? You have diabetes. What do you expect? You have coronary disease. What do you expect? You have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And the list goes on. You know what you're taking relative to medications. How many of you are taking at least, you know, one medication? And then you look at it again, how many of you are taking maybe five or six? The old time winner in our practice was a guy that walked in and he happened to work for the FDA, okay, Food and Drug Administration. He was taking 22 different prescription medications, 22. I'm not making this up. It's not a figment of my hallucination of any of any sort, but 22. And he had the, the traditional cocktail, if you will, of uh, you know somebody who had a metabolic syndrome. So he was taking something for his blood pressure, something for his cholesterol. He was taking something for his blood sugar. And then there were the side effects of all those other things. Now, <clears throat> he started getting the neuropathies that come as a result, by the way, of the drugs more often than anything else. And now those had to be treated with other drugs. And then the body ache that came as a result of the statin, the cholesterol-lowering medication that he just ached all over with. And that's the result often of 
coenzyme Q10 being depleted because of the statin. And, oh, yeah, the aspirin, you know, the daily aspirin that you're supposed to be taking, the uh, 81 milligram daily aspirin that you're that the uh, the FDA actually was forced to do a 180 degree reversal on its position in August of 2014, and that was published in every major journal across the country. And then they came out. Well, we can't give statin or um, aspirin anymore. We have to find a reason for for uh, blood thinning. We got to find a reason to give it because it's way too much money to the bottom line. And we have said many times on the program, just to bear, it's like 1.28 or billion dollars. That's B billion. So when you start looking at the self-perpetuating cycle that our healthcare system keeps us in, and you know, I've said many times, the, the drug companies do not want to kill you, but they want to keep you in equilibrium where they can maintain you for the rest of your life because it's profitable to do that. Yeah, I did say that, didn't I? So it's profitable to do that. So let's go through, and I want to uh, take your calls today your, and questions on anything that you have at 888 And let's talk about some of the things that are going on, why you can't get well. First, let's say what the basis is, right? Well, there's only three things that cause anything. You've either had some injury over a period of time, and injury can be significant. It could be a fall. It could be, you know, a car accident. It could be that, you know, you got in a fight when you were younger. You played ball. You know, you could have played football. You know, tis the season right now, and everybody's getting their heads beat in. You could have, uh, you know, played soccer and smashed your, your head against the ball when you're trying to hit it out. So that's one thing. And then there's little injuries, postural patterns, being a little overweight. You know, you shouldn't be in the condition that you're in. You don't like getting out anymore. You sit on your butt. That's injurious, by the way. You know, as they say, sitting is the new smoking. And that can cause cardiovascular problems. It can cause toxic problems. All of those things that keep stacking and adding up over a period of years. So we look at the structural system. Are we keeping that body of ours, that machine, in a good place? Do we stretch it? Do we walk it? You know, stretch and walk it, you know, it's like a dog. You know, take them out and you walk them. You know, well, got to walk yourself and you got to make sure that that's taking place. The second thing is biochemistry. It's everything in, in today's world, bioelectrical. Everything that is outside of your body, exogenous, that affects your body inside. Things that you eat, you shouldn't be eating. Things that you need more of, you don't get enough of. You know, as we said, today's world, electrical fields, incoming, all the genetically modified foods, the hybridized foods, the pollution, the additives, all the things that they put into the foods and foods are exposed to, the animals that we eat and the things that they're exposed to. And the third is that crazy thing that we call stress, that emotional platform that you come from. See, the body doesn't know the difference physiologically but between something that hurt it, something that polluted it, and something that you think about and how your mind works. That's the old axiom. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you're right. That's really true. You know, uh, years ago, there was a patient of mine, and he was in one of the major companies that was very close to our practice. And I started treating the man when he was about 42, 43 years old. And high dynamic guy, he would go out all over the world for the company, and he would uh, prepare sites when they would close them and, and, you know, get them ready for, you know, different projects. So part of his uh, raise, if you will, they gave him a $5 million dollar life insurance policy. Well, those of you who had life insurance policies, even a half a million to a million dollars in whole life particularly, they're going to look up every piece of you that they can possibly think of, and then some. They did some blood work on him. Doc calls him up, and he says, you know, Mr. Jones, I'd like you to come in, and, and I'd like to go to this blood work with you. And he said, Doc, listen, I am over the top busy. This guy's you got a couple kids. He's married. And he said, can't you just tell me over the phone? I said, no, sir, I'd really like to go over. So the guy shows up in his office, and Doc slides the blood work over, and he says, sir, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're HIV positive. And here's a guy who's dynamic and just a vibrant human being, and a diagnosis of a positive HIV factor. Now, in this man's mind, this dynamo, this crazy guy, and he wasn't a drug user, he uh, was a heterosexual human being. And, but what had happened some years before that in Southeast Asia, he was in a car accident and he had a transfusion. And all these years he was fine. And so in his brain, that was a death warrant. And nobody could convince him otherwise. And particularly today in Western society, nobody dies of AIDS. And it's well 
maintain its struggles, and there's a lot of things. The support mechanisms have to be done for poor people that end up with a with a progressive onslaught of of uh, human immunological uh, virus. But here's the deal. It went on. He fought it emotionally, but in the back of his head, he had a negative piece that just not would not leave him, would not go away. About 14 years later, he died of pneumococcus cysti, which is a sequela of AIDS. It's a cancer of the lung. So think about where your headspace is. Think about where your body is. Do you have stinking thinking? Are you of the mindset that when something happens, there's no turning around? Well, here's what happens when we can't get well. There's a lot of things that can continue to take place. We live with pain. We're on medications that cause their own side effects. Or we have a headspace that says, what do you think, you know, or what do I expect for my age? These things happen to everybody. Well, I have arthritis. I have this. I have that itis. I have whatever condition the textbook says that the doctor reiterated and put in as my diagnostic acumen. Interesting. But the point of it is, is that we see this in our practice on a day-to-day basis, and we have people who are always sick and can't get well. And so we have to answer the question, how do you do it? How do you get well, and how do you stay better? So you know, we, we talk about immunological problems, right? Well, my immune system isn't strong. Well, aging does weaken the immune system, but only because it's not age, it's time. It's what we do to ourselves over a period of time, structurally, chemically, emotionally. So, you know, over time, you know, we don't eat enough protein, so our body can't repair itself. So our diets have a lot of sugars in them. You know, I've, you've heard me say many times that years ago that the consumption of sugar in this country, about 200 plus years ago, was about 14 pounds per person per year, and now it's something in the neighborhood of 170, 170 pounds per person per year. Well, one teaspoon of sugar or the equivalent decreases immunological response in the body. Your white blood cells' ability to attack all kinds of things and protect you, about... for 12 hours, and some authors will even bring it up higher than that. So you have white blood cells, but they're comatose, and that's one teaspoon. How many of you eat a whole lot more than that about the candy bars, the chocolates, the... Just take a look at the packages. You know, if you're not shopping on the perimeter of the supermarket, you're getting a lot of junk in your system. I dare you to take up the package and take a look at it. You know, how many colds in a year is normal? Well, you shouldn't be getting colds, period. You know, families with, you know, children that are in school, particularly younger kids, you know, we kid around and we say, you know, they're little Petri dishes that come home to infect us. But you're only going to get sick from that exposure if, in fact, your immune system isn't doing what it was meant to do. You know, the average person has about two to four colds per year. But that just means how many people are getting sick. It has nothing to do with normal. You shouldn't get sick. You know, women especially, somewhere between ages 20 and 30, have more colds than men, and possibly simply because of what we just talked about. They're living around those little Petri dishes all the time, and the kids bring them home. But mom's going crazy, right? She's not eating the way she's supposed to because she's worried about the kids. She's running from here to there because she's got to get the kids to where they need to be. She's not sleeping at nighttime because she's the one that's responsible for making sure that the kids you know, are taking care of at night. Shame on you guys. You need to get up and help mom out and, you know, do some things to help her. But in the meanwhile, we're getting sick where we shouldn't do that. So there's no normal when it comes to uh, not being sick or colds or flus because you shouldn't have them in the beginning. So, you know, when you may also get infections, you know, when immune system is cracked because of uh, other kind of job situations. You don't get outside. You don't get enough vitamin D. You're in a constant state of stress. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. We're going to talk about how you can keep yourself well coming into the next several months. I want you to stay well. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. It is Saturday because the Redskins are in town tomorrow. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. I'm in studio. Call me, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. We're talking about why you can't seem to get better. 
and why you keep getting sick. And, you know, it's the time of the year where you stay sick all winter long. You just don't feel good. There's a lot of reasons for it. And we're going to touch on several that you can do something about. As I said, it is in your hands because so much of it is, you know, things that you've ignored forever. You know, you don't go outside. You don't go for a walk. You look for the closest parking spot next to the shopping center or to the mall. And God forbid that, you know, something you have to get up and go into the other room to do something. You're, you're, you, you yell out, honey, you know, whether it's, you know, you're whoever, and you say, bring me what you can't even get off your butt. You know, kids are locked into their, their devices. They don't move anymore. They're eating so much junk. You know, their vegetables are unheard of. You, know, you have to sneak them in to your kids by giving them smoothies in the morning or even yourself because you don't want to take the time to get it done. You know, it's, it's a frustrating, challenging pattern for me when I see people who could make life a whole lot easier for themselves and they don't. They find every reason, every story why they can't, which, by the way, a reason or a story is an excuse in my book. So think about your stories and think about your reasons and uh, parallel that uh, you got that excuse that is your way of approaching all kinds of things. So it's not okay. So, you know, you have things that you end up with and you don't seem to be able to get a handle on it. And you say, well, it's this time of the year and I know I'm going to get sick. Well, that's the other side of the triad. You know, the emotional side that says, well, I'm going to get what I'm going to get because I'm going to get it. And, you know, this is what I expect to have. And you become a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's incredible how that happens. You know, the opposite piece, by the way, is a, is a positive attitude. And you can go in and you can check out all kinds of sites and you can, uh, on can a positive attitude keep you well? Can positive thinking keep you well? Well, there's a lot of correlations between how your mind works and the expectation that you have and what happens to your body. You know, you will attract you those things that can make a difference. Many of you know that I traveled with a guy by the name of Tony Robbins for many years and took care of him and his family. And I'm not telling uh, stories out of school right now, but, you know, he has as part of his keynote, his four day program, Unleash the Power Within, he has this interesting metaphor that he does on the first night. It's called Fear into Power, the Firewalk Experience. So if I asked you, listen, Open your oven, and the, the oven's on at 400 degrees, and I want you, without anything on your hand, I want you to pull the grate out with your fingers. And you would look at me and say, are you out of your freaking mind? You know I'm going to get hurt. But better yet, let's go outside in the parking lot, and there's two feet by 15 feet of 2,000 degrees of hot burning coal, and we're going to take our shoes and socks off, and we're going to walk across that. And again, you think that I've lost my absolute gourd in telling you and suggesting that, he, that we would do that. Well, the truth of it is, in the eight years I traveled with him, I had the opportunity to do that probably about 15 times. So 15 foot fires and 20 foot fires and 40 foot fires, and I've never had a pink spot on my foot. How is that possible? Is it mind over matter? Absolutely it is. Your mind your mind has a capacity to resolve, to turn around, to fix virtually anything that happens to your body. When you get into a negative spin, no matter what it is, you will produce that ultimately. Louise Hay was one of the most amazing and prolific writers when it comes to how the body responds to mental thought and, uh, if you will, attitude. And, you know, she's, she wrote, hugely on the subject of, you know, what happens when you have hate in your heart, when you have, don't confuse me with the facts. I'm not going to move away from, you know, where I am right now. And the health conditions that ensue because of that. When somebody is hateful, somebody is vengeful, they're the ones that end up with the tumors. They're the ones that end up with the cancers. When somebody is stuck in their position, that they don't want to change the, their approach, their attitude. They're the ones that get the hardening diseases, the arthritic conditions, the immobile conditions. And we all have to realize that, you know, we have a lot of those things. So we have to be the, the captain, if you will, of our mind and make sure that we direct it in a positive way. Positive thinking 
that usually comes with optimism as a key part of effective stress management, what is a key part in making sure that we stay well and healthy over a period of time. Without that, without the attitude, you know, we talk about the the keys or, you know, the, the secret to keeping well. The secret is focus on that which you want and you begin to attract it to you because now you begin to see it and you begin to see the things that you can utilize to make a difference. And we're talking about your health. When we come back, we're going to talk about all kinds of little things, but you're going to give me a call at 888 Five. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. Don't go away. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. I'm in studio, 888 That's how you find me here. And when I'm not here, do you like to uh, get a note out to the office or you'd like to talk uh, easily to me. That's by email. I usually answer those. Trying to get a hold of me otherwise is like craziness. Uh, just go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. Rosellecare.com. And I will respond to you. If you'd like to talk to one of our doctors about any kind of a health care problem and just get some thoughts, call the office at 703-698-7117. That's 703 one seven. In the meantime, we're talking about something that all of us should be really interested in right now. It's like staying well and getting rid of all the sickness that's been bugging you for a long period of time. We just talked about the structural chemical emotional platforms and they all are integrated into everything that happens, whether you have back pain or whether you have migraine headache or whether you're just not feeling good and you never seem to get away from it, no matter what, what happens and why. You know, we said we're going to touch a little bit about on the the uh, the flu statistics, and so many of them are skewed. You know, the CDC does conduct studies to measure the benefits of the seasonal flu vaccine each flu season to help determine how well the flu vaccines are working or the effectiveness, if you will, of the flu vaccine. CDC has been, you know, working with supposedly researchers and hospitals and universities over a period of a long time. The problem is you can take any statistical information and kind of twist it so it represents the outcome that you want to achieve. And in this situation, selling huge amounts of flu vaccine. Remember when I said over, over time that if you want to know the real story about something, ask the question, who put the information out? What did they have to gain by it? And who either is getting the money or who wrote the check to begin with? And then you begin to understand that there may be a fox in the hen house. And this is one of those times where I want you to look to find the fox because that old boy has been ripping up those chickens for a long, long time. And, you know, you're going to hear that there's effectiveness rate of 50 to 60 percent. And what that really means, and I really need you to understand what that means. That means it's when you get a flu shot, it stirs up an antibody response. It causes an antibody response to a viral pattern 50 to 60% of the time. And that's generally at the top end. I'm looking at data right now in front of me, and we're, we're looking at 60% effectiveness rate. And it goes down to as low as 19%. And that was back in 2014-15. And I think all of you know the information that they finally came out and said it was totally ineffective. So what happens when you have an antibody? So the antibody then supposedly protects you. But here's the thing that they don't tell you is that only about 50% of the time did the stimulation of the antibody response, was it significant enough to protect you? 50%. So when you take that 60%, that's only 30%. When you take that 19%, that's like less than 10%. You have a better chance of doing nothing and actually, there's things that you can do with zinc and vitamin C and echinacea and vitamin D and drinking a lot of water and stopping the sugars and actually getting a little exercise, very gentle. And you'll be surprised how well you can do. And particularly if you actually start eating things that were good for you. It's amazing how we can turn our body around. Pete, how can I help you, sir? Thank you for calling. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um... Is, um, I wanted to ask about seasonal allergies. Specifically, I, um, I bet, uh, as of a couple of days ago, I got really smacked with one, and um, 
And I'm wondering, what, what exactly is it that's going on at this time of year? Is it ragweed or what? Yes. <laughs> Actually, all kinds of things. Right now, because of all the wet that we've had, you have also have mold and mold spores, and you have the ragweed that's out there. You've got a combination of several things. You know, things are, are rotting. You go in most backyards now, the, 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 uh, it is so wet and uh, saturated that you can, you can see the mushrooms coming out of the ground. You know, and I say that, you know, uh, lovingly. I went over to a friend's house the other day, and the guy that normally has a very manicured yard, he's got these big white mushrooms that are growing, and he's making them crazy. Uh, but that's part of it. So if you have any kind of sensitivity to mold or spores, this is going to be an ugly season right now, not to mention, you know, the, the fall ragweeds and, you know, the, the trees that are, are breaking down and so forth. All that's coming in your body. So what happens is that because so many of us have immunological weaknesses uh, that we're not producing enough enzymes within our body, we're not producing an, enough antibody reactions. One of the primary things that helps us defend ourselves in any type of allergic reaction, whether it's in the spring or it's in the fall or other things that we're exposed to, whether it's dogs, cats, or things of that nature, believe it or not, is adequate amounts of hydrochloric acid within your stomach. Your hydrochloric acid if you have adequate amounts of it, and as we get older, unfortunately, it begins to wane and begins to break down, it destroys the outer protein coat around the allergen. And then your body goes after it and begins to destroy it even further. You have mucous membranes uh, that also have to ward you off. The mouth produces enzymes like amylase and protease, and they begin the process of breaking things up, but they also trigger the intestinal tract to help. So those are our primary uh, situations. So people who have predispositions right now, and we're seeing more of them in our practice, to mold and spores and things that nature are really suffering this year. And we're in, a, in another uh, part of the, uh, early on this year, we're already seeing different types of viruses. And there's like 200 different viruses that are out there. And it's affecting the lymph nodes. It's affecting the sinus membranes. People are getting fevers. Uh, it's, and then it's settling into the lung. And this is what we've noticed now over the last 30 days in our practice. So we have to, you know, if you want to deal with this without having to take a hammer, and when I'm talking about getting a hammer, the steroids and the antibiotics and, you know, the flonases and things of that nature, you have to begin to shift what's going into that structure called the human body. So we want to make sure that we dumb down the amount of sugars that are going in our system. We want to make sure that we're drinking tons of water, clear water, put a little lemon in it, put a little lime in it. We want to make sure that we're getting vegetables you know, that have a tremendous amount of minerals and enzymes in our body. Those things will help as well as you know, if you want to be proactive uh, and upregulate the immune system, uh, Manual manipulation, acupuncture, uh, uh, very specific herbal ingredients as well, the, plus the ones that I've talked about can do a great job and begin to reverse a lot of this. Pete, a lot of this is individualistic as well. It depends on the person, depends on their background. So, but generally speaking, if you you know you want to help yourself, uh, start taking a whole bunch of vitamin C, about a thousand milligrams, three to four times a day, but spread it out over a period of time. You know, that's not going to hurt you. Vitamin C is water soluble. Um, making sure if you're, if you know you're a cave rat and have been all summer long, your vitamin D levels probably around your toenails. Uh, you need to start taking some D. Echinacea is an herb that stimulates the body's immunological reactions uh, within the system, and also zinc. We do a, a zinc tally test on every patient that walks in our office, and about 80% of the people that walk in, their zinc levels are very low. Why is that important? Because zinc works actively to help defend the body from viral invasion. So those are little things that can be done. So, Pete, I hope that helps you a little bit, but that's uh, that's what we're looking at, and, and that's what's happening. If we can be of more help, you know, obviously reach out and uh, love to give you some more information. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. We're on Saturday today at 4 o'clock. Why? Simply because of the fact that the Redskins are playing at home. Usually we're here on Sundays, as many of you have known. We've been here for in excess of about 16, 17 years. Same old place and same old dial. But, you know, the Redskins win and we're here. But at least we're here for you and you can always get a hold of us and ask us any question that you'd like to have. We have a great uh, bunch of people that can help you with anything that may be going on. All you have to do is go to Roselle Care. 
dot com. That's R O S E L L E C A R E dot com. By the way, take a look around it and it's tied into another website, just Dr. Tom Roselle dot com, D R T O M R O S E L L E dot com. And lots of learning there for you. And if you go uh, down, you're going to see a way to link in to other radio programs and they're all tagged relative to topic. And I think that you'll enjoy that. I uh, want to remind you that October is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we're offering through Thermography Centers of Fairfax, and Dareth Painter being uh, the person that you need to reach out to, um, a 20% discount on, on all breast thermography. Look it up. It's um, Meditherm, M-E-D-I. Meditherm is an outfit that uh, Fairfax uh, uh, Thermography Centers works with, and there's a group of doctors. That's all they do is they read these far better ladies than being exposed to mammography radiation and, and having very soft tissue uh, squeezed and then irradiated. Remember we said 45 pounds of weight goes on that breast, and it's not okay, particularly when you know that radiation is cumulative and it begins to, you know, predispose the body to things that you don't want to have to think about, and it's highly preventable in many cases. We're talking about how to keep yourself well when you can't get well, when you can't get better. You know, as we said that, you know, the CDC constantly upgrades this information, but it really doesn't give you the whole truth. And I need you to make sure that you read between the lines, ask the tough questions. And, you know, when you get into depression this time of the year, a lot of it's simply because of the fact that there is no sun. And a lot of you simply, you know, have a real sweet tooth. We're coming into the sweet season, starting with Halloween, and then we go to Thanksgiving, and then we go to the holiday season of Christmas and Hanukkah and, you know, all the other things, and then New Year's Eve. And then by the time middle of January comes along, we are sick people. We do not feel good. We don't like to go out anymore because, oh, my God, it's a little too cold outside, and I can't walk when it's cold outside. I can't stretch when it's cold outside. Um, I think you need to rethink that. I think you need to, you know, put a different look on the subject S because if you do little things, you can make a whole lot better for yourself and between your attitude. Remember, structural, chemical, emotional. But you tell me, Doc, I keep getting colds. And we said earlier that like two to four a year and you shouldn't get any of them. And, you know, we're talking about the average number of colds, two to four. If I don't get any, how many of you get my, my share of it, right? Just like I said, as far as sugar, you know, if we're getting 170 pounds of sugar per person per year, and I'm lucky if I get a little bit, uh, who's getting my share of that stuff? You know, it's, you can, you can take mine and, you know, you can deal with it. I don't want the stuff, but, you know, here go. And, you know, then can I get a cold twice in a row? The, the, the um, Answer is yes, but it's a different virus, and viruses mutate, and so do flu bugs and things of that nature. So you know when you—that's uh, another thing when you go get the flu shot, it's not necessarily the one for the flu that's out there because it mutates so rapidly, and that's one of the reasons that the effectiveness rate is so so low. So you got to do things on your own to make a difference. You know when you get a fever, you know with a cold. Uh, if it's viral, it's going to be about 101, 99.8. You know, maybe it'll get up to 102. It starts cranking up to 102 or more and stays higher than that. It may be a bacterial problem. And you need to do things. But, you know, you get that runny nose and congestion and follow along by, you know, f four or five days of body ache and, and so forth. Well, there's things that you can do to make a difference. And, uh, is, you know, as long as you haven't gotten it into your respiratory system, there's... Homeopathics, there, there's things like acicillium. We talked a little bit about zinc. We talked a little bit about vitamin D and, and so forth. But you really need to understand that it's because your body is becoming more susceptible because of your neglect and not stepping up to the plate the way you should. You know, I wish I could have you all live with me for a very short period of time and show you what you really can do to keep yourself strong. We have patients that come into the office who've been sick for decades, and you know they they came in for different reasons other than I don't feel good, but they hurt, they're in pain, they're you know they've uh, had migraines for years, and we've set them under a course of care that allows them to reverse the problem over a period of time, and 
then they start saying, you know, hey, doc, I didn't get sick this year. Do you think this had anything to do with it? Well, the end of the day is that if your nervous system is working properly, it's going to stimulate all your immunological responses within the body. And it's going to make a difference in how your body reacts and defends yourself. You know, if you're putting up with things, you can't move as easily as you should. If you're putting up with things like you have this neck and head that bother you almost daily, you're putting up with things where your hands are tight. That tells you neurologically, structurally, things aren't working the way they're supposed to. And, you know, if you find that's happening, you need to get some professional, manual, manipulative, adjustive care to your nervous system and maybe add that to some acupuncture and maybe add that to a little exercise. You know, researchers found at Appalachian State University, you know, this going back to 2010, they followed more than 1,000 adults in the fall and winter monitoring their activity level and the rates uh, and then they compared it to the rates of upper respiratory infections and uh, flus and so forth. And what they found was that people who got exercise on a regular basis had a much, much lower rate of being sick and staying sick than people who just ignored their bodies and didn't do anything about, you know, anything in their life. So, you know, you put them you know, in a place where they're getting exercise, that all by itself stimulates the body's immunological response. It makes things better. You know, you'll get better faster, believe it or not, when the temperature drops. So why is it that you get sick when the weather's cold outside? It has nothing to do with the cooler weather. It has to do with the fact that the sunshine's not there in many places. It has to do with the fact that this time of the year, you don't go outside and get any exercise. You stay inside. You hibernate. It has to do with the fact that you start eating garbage from this time of the season all the way through the winter, and you neglect what it is that you should be doing yourself. Talk to us anytime, and we'll put you on the right directive. All you need to do is go to rosellecare.com or call 703-698-7117 and tell our staff that you'd like to talk to one of our doctors or even better yet, make an appointment. Come in and check it out. And don't forget that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Go to our website at rosellecare.com. Check out the offer that Fairfax um, Thermography Centers has made to you. And as always, if we can help you in any way. We're coming up uh, to a break. Don't go away. I have a whole lot more for you before we say see you next week. But for right now, just hang in there and we'll be right back. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. 105.9 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live in studio on this very lovely fall day. It's cool outside, but it's so pretty. Hopefully you had an opportunity to get out and do a little bit of walking, you know, and get yourself healthier than you were before the day started. It's one of those things that we all need to pay more attention to. Remember that we're here today, Saturday at 4 p.m., only because the Redskins are in town tomorrow at 1 p.m., so we get bumped. But check the calendar. When the Redskins are not in town, we're back at our normal time, Sundays at 1 or 12 p.m., and Saturdays when they are in town at 4 p.m. So do the math. They'll be over soon, and then we'll be back to our, our normal schedule. But uh, having said that, if you'd like to get a hold of us, and many of you listen to us from all over the country and uh, different parts of the world, interestingly enough, and we thank you for that, make sure that you know you send us your questions, and all you have to do is go to rosellcare.com, and we'll get back to you, and we'll try to give you as much information as we possibly can to guide you the way that you deserve to be guided. That's why we do this program. That's why we've been doing it for years. So there's ways that you can do things to help yourself. And by the way, drinking orange juice is not the way to get your vitamin C or to make you feel better when you're sick. Why is that? Well, first of all, orange juice, the juice of, of an orange when you're drinking four to six to eight ounces of it all at one time, has a very high level of sugar in it. Number one. Two, it's mucus forming. If you think about uh, orange juice in your mouth, you can feel your sinuses, the back of your throat kind of, you know, tighten up a little bit. But there are things like echinacea. There are things like uh, green tea. There's things like hot water and lemon that can help you a lot and make things 
much better and improve and actually fight colds at a very significant level. You know, research, research does not support the healing uh, properties of uh, an old-fashioned cure. But the, and what I'm going to tell you what it is, uh, you're going to say, what? Uh, how come? And it's because it's pasteurized, and that's honey. And, you know, everybody thinks, well, if I go get some honey and it's going to be all good, it, it's not so good for you unless it's raw honey. And Manuka honey is the one that actually does the best for any kind of bacterial fungal types of conditions. It's more expensive, but it has to be raw. And if you're not getting that, you're causing yourself a problem. So make sure that you're getting uh, an unpasteurized raw form of honey. Much more difficult to find, but you can find them. And, you know, when this flu season starts ramping up, which seems to be doing earlier this year for whatever reason, uh, you got to take some action and make sure that you're not drinking milk Make sure because that's mucus forming. Your dairy is going to cause you mucus as well. Your orange juice is going to cause you mucus. And you're going to find some websites that are going to tell you, go do that. That's Those are the things that are going to help you. Not so much. But just remember, there, there are over 200 different viruses floating around every given year. So why don't you get canned all the time? If they're there all the time, 365 days a year, why don't you get them in the summertime? in the middle of summer. You just get them kind of towards, you know, the beginning of the, the winter and fall season or towards, because of all the things we just talked about today. You are becoming slugs. You guys don't move the way you're supposed to move. You're not eating the things that you need to be eating. You're not stretching. It's, it's really from our platform, it's really straightforward and easy. Your nervous systems have been beat up and broken. So they can't stimulate your body's immunological reactions. It's critical that you become proactive. And if we can help you in any way, any way at all, please join us at any of our in-house continuing education programs. All you have to do is go to rosalcare.com. That's why they're there. To give you as much information as we possibly can give you to you being the proactive partner in your health. It's about you. You're the one that needs to be responsible. We're coming up to that part of the program where I have to say I'll see you next week. Next week we'll be back on Sunday at 12 o'clock. See you then. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com.
Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. Thank you. 